Hey friends, it's Joel Richardson with an update on Afghanistan on behalf of GCM, that's Global Catalytic Ministries. I know many of you that are regular subscribers or who tune in regularly are aware of the fact um, that I partner with Global Catalytic Ministries, which is one of the largest underground networks, underground church networks in Iran, Afghanistan, and several other Middle Eastern countries. Now, obviously, since the American withdrawal from Afghanistan, since the catastrophe that the whole world witnessed just a few months ago, I personally, with GCM, have just been a neck deep involved in the project of Afghanistan to help those from our network that are trying to get out of the country. And to date, we've got roughly 600 uh, out of the country, and we've got probably at least that much who still remain on our list, on our manifests. This is a tremendously tedious, difficult process, as you can imagine, moving people around in Afghanistan with uh, under Taliban control, with checkpoints, with all of the legalities, the surrounding nations, with passports, visas, just all of these things, things constantly changing from day to day with all of the emotions and dangers and difficulties, as you can imagine, uh, it's been a very, very difficult project. But I want to begin, first of all, just by thanking all of you who heard the call and who jumped in and actually partnered with GCM and who donated and who have been s praying and supporting uh, everything that we're doing there. It's, um, it's continuing forward, as I said. It's, uh, it's an emotionally taxing uh, ministry, so to speak, when you get messages, voice messages, text messages in the middle of the night from people who are panicking because they're in fear of their family, their children being taken. The Taliban are outside the, the house or the apartment and they're knocking or they're looking around or other families are being taken, this type of thing. It's just, it's super, super intense. Um, and we don't have a tremendous amount to really update you on because <clears throat> we really can't share so much of the details. Um, as I said, I'm even hesitant to say to share these numbers, we've got out roughly around 600, we've got at least that much, and we've got numerous other networks who have collected names and information, and they're reaching out saying, we heard that you're one of the few operations that's actually successful in getting people out. Could you take our lists? And we say, actually, we're out of funds for that. I mean, we raised a lot of money, but there's a lot of expenses that go into a rescue operation like this, as you can imagine. Uh, a lot of mice nibbling off of the same piece of cheese when you have to sort of pay off different people and, and make this sort of network happen. Um, a lot of expenses, but it ends up boiling down to somewhere between three and five thousand dollars per person uh, for an extraction. And then, of course, we do our best to make sure that they're cared for for a couple months at least after we get them out of the country. So everything from food to safe houses to security, on and on and on to there's just numerous expenses that go into it. So this is where we are right now. We're continuing to raise funds for the rescue operation. Uh, and we expect for what it's worth, and I've said this a few different times, I personally expect Afghanistan to continue to be a ministry opportunity in a really profound way for years to come. Again, I'm just comparing it to what took place in Syria and Iraq with ISIS just a few years ago. June, 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 July 2014, ISIS explodes uh, through Syria, takes over Raqqa and enters Iraq, takes over Mosul, occupies these areas. Well, here we are. We're, we're past seven years later. And to this day, they're still rescuing young Yazidi girls and Christian girls and Shabak Kurds, different minority groups from ISIS, rescuing them as child brides or former child soldiers. Many of them have now grown up. And they've been indoctrinated and brainwashed into becoming fighters for ISIS. They're still, they're still out there. They're still saving people. So if ISIS took seven years, the entire nation of Afghanistan, I expect to be a ministry opportunity for years ahead. So yes, we're absolutely continuing to raise monies for the rescue operation, but there's much more than that. So I just want to highlight a couple other things that we're doing. First of all, um, I won't share all the details, but I'll just say that I do also sit on the board of another ministry called antecessor.org. I've mentioned them in the past, and Antecessor works oftentimes with uh, also ministry in the Middle East, but with refugees that are pouring out of the Middle East, pouring up through Eastern Europe, 
uh, as they're headquartered in Albania, and they've done all kinds of wonderful Christian humanitarian relief projects over the years. Nathan and I, who head up uh, Antecessor, have actually written a book together called The Mystery of Catastrophe, where we discuss Christian responsibility in the light of these massive displacements of people. We explore redemptive history throughout the biblical narrative, how the Lord consistently throughout history has used displacements of people, mass migrations, refugees. He's used these events, these catastrophes, to further his redemptive purposes. And it's incumbent upon the church, who has a discernment concerning the hour, to respond appropriately and to see these as ministry opportunities. So one of the things that we've been so blessed at GCM to have been partnering with is to provide most of the funds for a fantastic relief project that's taking place in Albania. So Albania was one of the first nations that actually opened up and said, we will receive refugees from Afghanistan. Praise God for the godly leadership uh, in the government actually there in Albania. So praise God for that. They stepped forward. And so right now in Albania, there's roughly 1,400 refugees that Albania has received in. And some of our friends there in the national churches have partnered with this project to give aid and receive the refugees and to begin reaching out to them and sharing and teaching English. And so this is, of course, one of their most basic needs is education in English before many of them come to the United States or Canada or some other nations. But the United States is definitely one of the biggest ultimate destinations. And so, of course, they're beginning to learn English. And so it's wonderful that the government has actually given priority to some of our friends uh, to make this project happen who see it as a wonderful opportunity from heaven to meet the needs of those that are in desperate need. And so we've been partnering with them in doing that. I'm actually going to share just a brief video. It's only just a couple minutes uh, that highlights some of the work that uh, is taking place there. Why are you here in Albania? Because we were uh, from Taliban and uh, our life of, uh, was in danger in Afghanistan. I have a father and mother. They are back in Afghanistan and their life is in danger. They didn't make out. The situation is worse than you than world can imagine. Because we are not sure uh, for, for our future. There is no education system, nothing. Everything destroyed by Taliban. That's why we are here, to make our future better. I was a student. This was my last year. This was my last year in high school. We raised our voices. We raised our voice several times that Afghanistan is in danger, but no one heard us. Even they didn't act like we are humans. We need help. Afghanistan needs help. All right, so praise God for that. Again, as I said, because of your generous donations, GCM has been able to partner with this other wonderful ministry that has been providing, just partnering with the national churches and different ministries, humanitarian organizations, just good people who are doing the right thing in this moment of crisis. Okay, so we're blessed to be able to be partnered with what's happening in Albania. Further, I'm just going to read... Um, a message from one of the leaders in the church there in Afghanistan. And this highlights something else that we're doing, which is providing aid for the believers that are there in the country that have chosen to stay or that are still there and trying to get out. And we're providing aid. We're providing basic needs. We're providing food and so forth. And this is a note that I got from one of the leaders there in Afghanistan. And I've cleaned it up in terms of its English a little bit, and I'm just going to read it directly. So the leader said this. They said, The money that GCM has provided has been helping so many people. The people who are getting help are so appreciative. I go into their homes to deliver food, and they say that we are like angels to them. Some of them are tempted to go to work for the Taliban or even ISIS just to feed their children. So when I come, they feel like we have been sent from heaven. I teared up when I heard this. And it is not just food. The hospitals are also funded by the Taliban, and they do not have the money to pay the doctors or buy basic supplies. So many people are dying because the hospitals cannot even afford to help them. 
So when someone needs, someone from our network, needs life-saving surgeries, we can pay for them to be treated privately. And they went on and talked about how some of our people have needed over the past few months heart surgeries, even brain surgeries, and have actually been able to get them uh, in Afghanistan. It is very, very bad in Kabul. There are many bad things happening there. In the villages, however, it is much, much worse. It is double or even triple bad. So we are finding the people there who need the help, and we are getting aid to them. And again, they are so grateful. On the internet, surely you have heard of people selling their young daughters for marriage or selling their young sons to sell as child soldiers for the Taliban. This is really happening, even among the Christian families. But we are saving them from not having to do this, and thus they are so grateful for the aid that GCM is providing. I do not know of any other organization right now that is helping in this way. So again, I want to be clear, as an organization, GCM is not an aid organization. This is not our primary calling. Our primary calling is to make disciples. Our primary calling is to grow the church. And we were busy doing that in Afghanistan when the U.S. pullout happened, when the Taliban takeover of the nation happened. And thus, meeting the basic needs of our network, of the families in our network that have chosen courageously to stay, we view this as a basic um, responsibility as an organization to help them so they don't literally have to sell their children to feed the rest of their family. And so it's, it's incredibly emotionally moving to be partnered um, with you all, to be partnered with an organization that's doing this and to actually be helping people. And again, I get the texts, I get the messages, I see the real people who are so grateful uh, for the aid that we're sending. And then they added this, they said, I also forgot to say this, beside the believers who are staying, I don't know one Muslim who wants to stay here. So I've asked this leader a few times, so how many of our leaders are staying? How many are, are leaving? And they said, well, besides the believers that are staying, again, because they're committed to continuing to make disciples, to grow the church, this leader said, I don't know a single Muslim who wants to stay. Everyone is afraid and hopeless, especially those with young boys and girls. I have only met one Muslim who wanted to stay, and it turned out that he was a member of the Taliban. But now even he is in big trouble and is trying to flee. All of the other Muslims I know want to leave and go to a Christian country, and they are seeing the darkness of Islam. So this is a moment of opportunity where the people are seeing the darkness that the Taliban bring. They see the darkness that uh, efforts to establish Sharia law bring um, when a government is not considering the needs of the people and primarily just considering establishing Sharia, um, the people suffer. Now, I also want to say this with regard to our rescue operation. One of the reasons that it's taking so long and that it's so tedious is we are very carefully vetting all of those that we're getting out. Um, in the early days where the U.S. was helping some people to get out, they were virtually unvetted. And so now we have an abundance of Afghan refugees. And listen, I support taking care of refugees if they are vetted properly. You have to take care of the refugees while also taking care of the country that you're bringing them to. And so, for example, uh, I can't speak to the efficiency um, of the governmental vetting process, but I can just say I've heard it's been a catastrophe. We are, I won't get into all the details in terms of how we're doing it, but we're making sure we're not bringing people over here who are, you know, military age, fighting single young men and this type of thing. We're bringing families who are confirmed Christians. Um, we are assisting the body of Christ first and foremost. And of course, when we find those that were working with the U.S. military as translators, etc., they're sort of doubly, they get doubly moved up in terms of priority because they are uh, a target of the Taliban for having worked with the American military, and they're also targets because they're Christians. So we're very thoroughly, heavily vetting our people, and that takes time. It, it requires some talented people to be doing that, and indeed, we're doing all of that. So beyond all of these things, we have the weekly updates where we are continuing to meet with the leaders who are pushing forward, continuing to make disciples, share the gospel, spread uh, the, the message concerning the soon coming establishment of the kingdom of God on the earth from Jerusalem. And the testimonies we're hearing are wonderful. Um, I, I think I mentioned this in one of the previous videos, and I'm not sure, but in fact, this same leader um, in an earlier report, they said this, and it really just blew me away. They said, you know, 
we knew there were a lot of Taliban. We heard about it, but we never really saw them. You know, we heard that they're all around, that they're out in the mountains, but we never actually saw the Taliban. They said, we're so shocked at how many there are. They're everywhere. Everywhere you look, I had no idea there were this many. And then they said, but it's a wonderful opportunity because now we have access to them. Now we can share the gospel with them. We couldn't reach them before because they couldn't be found. Now they're everywhere. Now we have access to them. And I thought, you're kidding me. You're celebrating the fact that you now have access to one of the most dangerous, terrifying terrorist organizations in the world and that you have the opportunity now to share the gospel with them. And they are. So there's a lot of good things happening, but I just wanted to give that brief update. I know it's been um, a couple months since we've given an update on Afghanistan. The mission, the mandate, we're pushing forward. Uh, we're continuing to ask if the Lord would uh, lead you to prayerfully partner with GCM. Again, I'm going to release this video, I think, the day before Giving Tuesday, which is the big um, day every year where various... Uh, Various groups will partner with and match your giving. So I'm not going to speak to that all specifically, whether it's like some of the Amazon programs and different programs. They'll say, if you give on this day, we'll match it. And so there's a lot of opportunities, whether it's on Giving Tuesday or going forward. Um, but the ministry opportunities that we have in front of us are huge. They're multi-pronged, they're huge, and we're pushing forward. So again, if the Lord would move on your heart, again, please pray about it. I'm not trying to manipulate anyone into giving. But if the Lord would move on your heart to become a one-time or a regular supporter of GCM, we'll put the link up on the screen and uh, make that available for you to do that. But again, thank you so much, and uh, look forward to coming back and, and giving another update soon. But until then, friends, God bless you all. Have a blessed week, and Maranatha.